Well, hello, God bless you on this Thursday, the 29th of June, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And uh, I tell you, it seems like all good things must come to an end. And uh, one, of, one of these days, my friends, we're going to get with Jesus and we're going to be in heaven and it'll never come to an end. But down here, good things come to an end. Well, the good thing that I've, I'm speaking of has been our annual observance of Jesus Pride Month. As we have uh, lifted our voices, put up banners, featured awesome people to, to push back against America's promotion of a lifestyle that God calls an abomination. And there's not a person who's watching who's ever read the Bible who can disagree with what I just said. And uh, uh, at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and we have not been alone. Churches have made their stand, and we've been reclaiming God's rainbow. As you see today, I'm draped by my uh, uh, Jesus Pride flag, and you see the Jesus Pride uh, colors behind me. And yes, I am so proud to be a Christian. I am so thankful to God for my relationship with Jesus Christ, and uh, he is so good, and he's powerful. The Bible says this, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. As a matter of fact, that's first, first Peter chapter 4 and verse 16, uh, but look at this, verse 14 through 16 says this, he says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. Look at that. For the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Uh, but if any man, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, and I'm so proud, even the pushback and the rebuke that we get for exercising Jesus Pride Month for our declaration that we're proud of our relationship with Christ and proud to be called Christians and grateful to be identified with uh, biblical Christianity and the truth of the Word of God. Whatever suffering, whatever persecution or prosecution or whatever pushback comes our way, as a result of it. The Bible said that I'm not to uh, go on a fast. The Bible says I'm not to, to go uh, somewhere and hide. The Bible says I'm not to be ashamed, but the Bible says let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time will come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin at us, then what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God. I am so grateful that I obey the word of God. And I'm glad that I, we've been able to bring this before you this month. And let me say this to you in uh, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. The Bible says this, we have a more sure word of prophecy wherein to uh, you do well to take heed. Look at this. You do well. You want to live a good life. You want to be blessed. The scripture says that we do well to take heed to the word of God. Our more sure word of prophecy. That is our fixed word of truth. We do well to take heed to it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. I'm telling you, I thank God that we're going to take heed to the word of God and serve until the morning star comes and until the day star arises in our heart. The truth of the gospel. Listen, the, the, the end of this present age is coming. 
And we're in this present age, but there's a star coming. There's a day star that will arise. There's a light. There's a day coming. I want to remind every one of you, who, those of you who are born again and watching this, there is a day coming. Jesus Christ is going to come back and Jesus Christ is going to take us out of here. But until then, we must fight and be the church uh, militant. The day will come when we will, we will be the church in heaven glorified. Now, I'm honored to be draped by the flag. I had this flag made and uh, we've had a time. Gary, you can show him a clip of when we were at the school board and I would love for the people. He's going to show you just the row here where you see all of the Jesus uh, pride flags. You know what we did? We added to it. We upped our game this month of June because let me tell you something. I want to send this, this message to you. We're not uh, tired. We're not going to wear down. We're not going to wear out. And the reason we're not, it's not because we're that strong and we have that much strength, but it's because we're depending on the God of the Bible, the God who is the strength of our lives. Psalms 1, Psalms 27 tells us he's the strength of our life. He's our light and, uh, and he's our keeper. He's our God, and we're not going to be afraid. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear, David asks. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want to encourage the pastors out there as I uh, began to bring this to a conclusion and, and invite you to join, join me tonight in service. Pastors, don't let things like this come your way and you just ignore it. The only thing that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do and say nothing. Pastors don't, don't realize, realize that your members like mine watch television. Your members like mine are online. Your members like mine are being bombarded uh, with these messages of uh, immorality and wickedness. Your children, the children in your church, just as the children that attend our ministry, they, we all live in the same world. We're all subject to the same approach. If we're in the same area where it rains, we'll all get wet. And so the devil is using sports, he's using entertainment, he's using the uh, educational systems, he's using the public schools, he's using music, he's using all, every uh, avenue, every entity that he can to drive home uh, a message that is corrupt, a message that is anti-human, a message that is causing more and more of our young people to fall prey to this. And you mean to tell me, man of God, woman of God, you're not going to say anything. You're just going to pretend that what's taking place right before our eyes uh, is, is not taking place. And you have that you don't feel any responsibility at all to speak up and you're going to let the world uh, just have the month of June and the God of the Bible made June. And uh, uh, I, in a previous broadcast, I, I went down the list of all of the observances that takes place in the month of June. We're going to let them have the month of June when uh, also among the observances that are observed in the month of June, it's Christianity. It's supposed to be Christianity month. So what are we doing about that? What are we doing about that? What are you saying? What did you say, preacher? What did you say, bishop? Did you say, I don't want to be bothered with that? Did you say, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to come across as being judgmental. Did you say, uh, who am I to judge? <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I just want to, I just want to do this. And, and I, I know my tone is a little, a much more serious today. And one of the reasons it is, I, I just hate to see Jesus Pride Month in. Uh, 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 maybe, maybe you know, I don't know. I, 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 it's a somber thing for me because I love being in the fight and mixing it up for Jesus Christ. But let me just read this to you. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I think it's going to help some. And Brother Gary, I have time to just read this passage. The, the Bible says this. Judge not 
I'm reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 7, the King James Version of the Bible. Judge not. Now, this is not the way the world quotes it. The world quotes it, judge not, period. It's not what Jesus said at all. Jesus said, judge not, comma, that you be not judged. That is, do not judge or you shall be judged. For what, for with what judgment you judge, ye, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, what fixed standards you put out there, it shall be measured unto you again. The standards that you live, those standards will also be applied to you. So when he's saying don't judge, he's not, Jesus is not saying that there aren't behavior and th behaviors and things that are not worthy of, of discerning whether they are right or wrong. What he is saying is for those of us who stand and represent God's truth and we preach the truth of God, make sure you're living it yourself. What's wrong? What could be wrong with that? Isn't that what we're doing? We should be living it ourselves. And whatever fixed standards we preach to the people, then we should abide those standards. And he said this, and, and the way I know I'm, I'm telling the truth, it, it, in his next, it, it, Jesus says, And why beholdest thou the mote in thy brother's eye? Why pay attention to the speck in your brother's eye, but consider not at all the beam that is in thine own eye? See, if it, what, what he's condemning is the hypocrite, the person who has more wrong with them than the people they're preaching to. And uh, so he says, how will thou say to thy brother, let me pull the moat, let me pull the twig that is out of thine eye, and, and behold, a beam, a big two by four, is stuck in your own eye. You can't do it. He said, thou hypocrite, first, look at this, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. And then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the moat out thy brother's eye. Once you get the beam out of your eye, now you can see clearly to make the judgments. He wasn't saying that no behavior is worthy of uh, uh, being uh, discerned whether or not a behavior is right or wrong. He's just saying those of us who lift up the standard, those, those of us who name the name of Christ, those of us who are part of the church of God in Christ. If we're going to preach holiness, if we're going to lift up the standard, then that, that we got to make sure that the standard is being lifted in us. And when you find areas, notice Gary, I didn't say if, but when you find areas where you've fallen beneath the standard, you repent before the Lord, ask God to forgive you, ask God to give you strength, and you rise up above the standard. We can't preach a standard that we, we're unwilling to live up to. Two. Jesus said, thou hypocrite, first cast, uh, get the beam out of thine own eye, and thou shalt see clearly to get the moat out of thy brother's eye. And he says this, watch Jesus make a judgment. He says, give not that which is holy unto dogs. Now, Brother Gary, Jesus was not speaking of canines. He was not speaking of animals. Jesus judged some people and call them dogs. Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Read it. I'm sure you will. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pearls before swines. He wasn't talking about the actual pig, my friends. He was talking about people. So Jesus here determined that some folk, based on the way they live, he used slang and referred to them as dogs and pigs. And Jesus says, now when you're dealing with dogs and pigs, ain't no point in trying to pull the beam out of their eye. No point in dealing with them because they're dogs and pigs. 
So if someone is trying to help you and trying to correct you and trying to show you the way, don't get mad at them and accuse them of being judgmental. At least they don't think you're a dog. They don't think you're a pig. At least they think that you are worthy of an, of correction. Love, they love you enough to try to show you the right way. He says, less, look at this, because if you, if you give it to the swines, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. That is, they'll turn on you and try to fight you. Every time I read this passage, I think of the young lady who went out and she tried to speak to, I think she was on the campus of one of the prestigious schools in California, and she was trying to give her testimony of how the transgender athlete beat her, and uh, they had to take the young lady, Gary, and put her, put her in, a, in a room and get police to protect her because the the swines turned on her and tried to rend her, tried to hurt her for telling the truth. So my friends, we are called to discern between right and wrong and to shed the light on the difference. Hence, Jesus' pride. If, If there's anyone and anything to be proud of, It is our relationship with the God of the Bible, with Jesus Christ. And I'm praying that God give more discernment. Uh, uh, And and I don't know why so much discernment is even needed with this, though, because this is a black and white matter. Because the truth is, discernment is not really needed. uh, Well, I guess it is. You all have proven that it is. But I heard one man say discernment is not being able to tell the difference between right and wrong. He said discernment is being able to tell the difference between right and almost right. That's where the devil is trying to get us. And, and we've got to walk in the word of the Lord and know what God says so that we will know the difference between right and almost right. It's right to celebrate the rainbow. The God of the Bible, according to Genesis chapter 9, made the rainbow. Hallelujah. He created these beautiful colors. But it's wrong to take God's rainbow and the colors and dedicate it to a lifestyle that that same God called and calls an abomination. So we're bringing out Jesus' pride observances to a conclusion. Now, I'm still going to have my my old trusted fixtures in the back back there hanging up (laughs) and from time to time I'll remind the audience when we get new people watching hey what's this thing with this with this rainbow flags you know I don't understand the man you know he got those rainbow flags you know he's preaching but he got those rainbow flags God made the rainbow and that's the problem we have allowed the enemy to redefine God's rainbow read Genesis chapter 9 And you will see that the rainbow is a sign of grace and mercy. And I'm going out with this. I want to pray for you. The rainbow says that no matter how much it's raining, it will soon stop. (laughs) It's a promise that God put in the sky to remind him of the oath that he made to himself. That he would never again flood the earth with water. And when we see it, we are reminded of the oath that God made. So no matter how the rain is falling, we know that at some point, God's going to bring it to an end. Father, we just thank you for this Jesus Pride Month and this celebration. We thank you, oh God, for for just knowing the truth and walking in it. And Father, we pray for everyone who's watching. We pray for every soul, whether they are straight or not. We pray salvation to the lost. We pray, God, that you would heal the sick that are watching. Strengthen the believer. God, set that preacher on fire. Set that teacher on fire that we will teach God's truth with power and authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Now I've gone long today. I'm out of time, but I want you to join me 
right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ, tonight for Bible study and good preaching and teaching. We're going to study the Word of the Lord together, and God is going to bless you real good. I love you, my friends. We'll see you next time.